It's called a targeted ketogenic approach. You're allowing yourself to bounce out of keto for just a minute, just enough to load your glycogen stores up even more and give yourself a little bit of power for your workout, but you're not having this long lasting carbohydrate effect that's gonna keep you out of keto for an extended period of time. By combining small amounts of different kinds of carbohydrates, we can enhance our performance, whether you are on a ketogenic diet and think that you can't have any carbs at all, or you're not on a keto diet and you're just trying to find ways to improve your performance overall in the first place. You see, using science and using research, we can sort of biohack the way that our body sees carbohydrates to allow them to get into the system faster and ultimately get them into the muscle as glycogen faster. Meaning, if you're someone that's following a ketogenic diet or a low carb diet, you could potentially have your cake and eat it too. Get the power of carbohydrates in a very targeted approach, specifically for your workouts, while still maintaining all the power of a ketogenic approach so you have the heightened cognitive function as well. Hey, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We've got new videos coming out every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday. They're gonna help you with your performance, help you with your diet, and help you with your lifestyle overall. Also, make sure you hit that little bell button so you can turn on notifications whenever I go live. And make sure you check out highly.com for the apparel that I'm always wearing so that you can get a special deal on it. All right, so let's get down to the fun stuff. So before we can get down to what you actually need to do tangibly, we have to break down how carbs are actually absorbed. And you see, what's kind of crazy is we used to think that carbs could only be absorbed at a certain rate. It used to be hypothesized that you could only absorb carbohydrates at approximately 60 grams per hour, or one gram per minute. And anything faster than that was just not possible. Well, believe it or not, research is starting to prove that if we combine specific kinds of carbohydrates, that can close to double. Here, let me explain. We have two different kinds of carbohydrates that we really have to look at. Okay, we've got faster ingesting carbohydrates, which are the carbohydrates that do ingest at approximately one gram per minute. And then we have slower digesting carbohydrates. And I'm not talking about glycemic index here. I'm talking about a whole different transport system. Okay, fructose absorbs slower in a way. You see, fructose caps out at 30 grams per hour, or about a half a gram per minute. Now, you might be saying, well, wait a minute, I thought that fructose absorbed faster. Well, it's not that fructose doesn't absorb faster. It's the fact that fructose caps out. We have less transporters. You see, the way you have to look at it is like having two different kinds of buses, okay? We have a larger bus that can carry glucose and traditional carbohydrates, and it can carry more. And then we have a shorter, smaller bus that can only carry a little bit of fructose at a time, and it caps out, which is exactly why we can only absorb so much at a specific time. You see, it used to be believed that the whole reason we couldn't absorb carbs faster was simply because these transport chains, these transport molecules that would move them, would get completely saturated. Meaning, we only had 10 buses to carry 10 grams of carbohydrate. This is totally hypothetical. Now, what happens if we have 15 grams of carbohydrates? Well, we only have 10 buses. So that means that the rest of them have to stop and wait at the bus stop, which ends up slowing down your absorption. Okay, so this used to be the case. And I'll explain it a little bit more as we get into this. You see, we have to understand a little bit of biology, just a small amount, just to get kind of an embryonic layer of this. All right, we have this thing called the enterocyte. Okay, that's in our intestinal tract. You see, the enterocyte is a pretty cool thing. It's a cell that is inside our intestines. You have to completely wash away the conventional thought process that you have with the intestines. The intestines are a living thing. They have little cells, these little enterocytes. When you consume food, it doesn't just magically filter through your intestines and go into your bloodstream as particles of food. No, not at all. You see what happens is the food that you eat gets accepted by the enterocyte, goes into a cell, and then that cell diffuses it, and disperses it throughout the rest of the body or into the bloodstream to do its job. So once we know that, things start to make a little bit more sense. You see, when we consume regular glucose or regular carbohydrates or sugar, it utilizes a specific transporter, a specific larger bus known as SGLUT, SGLUT1. This stands for Sodium Glucose Transporter 1. And why it's called that is because it requires sodium also, which is very important. And I'm not gonna cloud everything right now. I'll explain the sodium portion in a minute. But basically, those carbohydrates hop on with S-GLUT1. S-GLUT1 takes those carbohydrates that you just consumed and it transports them to the enterocyte, to the cell in the intestines. Then inside the cell of the intestines, it does a little magic and then it turns around and disperses it out into the bloodstream. Okay, very cool, right? Okay, now fructose 
uses a slightly different system. For example, here's how it looks. You can ingest fructose, like coming from fruit, and it goes through a different pathway that does not require sodium. It goes through what is called the GLUT5 transporter, just a different, shorter bus. And this bus also goes to the enterocyte. Okay, so basically, we have two different buses going to the same location, but they carry different kinds of people, right? In this case, different kinds of glucose or different kinds of carbohydrates. But they all go to the enterocyte. And then they all leave the enterocyte via the same pathway, which is called GLUT2, but that's not really that important. Okay? So they all go to this enterocyte via different mechanisms. They all leave the enterocyte via the same. Okay? Now, what am I getting at, and why do I have to explain this craziness? Just make sure you stick with me, because it's all going to make sense, and you're going to have the perfect formula to help yourself out. Remember how I said that the glucose requires sodium to actually absorb? Well, let me explain what happens there, because this is going to come into play when you're creating your little formula to get the most out of this. Okay, sodium is required to activate the glucose transporter that takes in carbs. Yes, believe it or not, regular carbohydrates, not fructose, regular carbs like glucose and regular starches will not absorb unless sodium is there. Whoa. Well, why is this important? It's exceptionally important on keto because you're already going to be sodium deprived because your body's depleting sodium. Without sodium, you can't utilize the carbohydrates. And it looks like this. Basically, the transporter accepts sodium first, so the sodium comes in, hits the transporter, and once it does that, it opens the door of the transporter so that the glucose can come in. So without sodium, the door doesn't open. So sodium comes in, opens the door, the carbohydrates you just ate come in, the door closes, and then it turns around and it releases the glucose and the sodium. It's just sodium is just a key. What ends up happening is sodium leaves the cell very fast, and it creates what's called a gradient with potassium. Okay, now this is getting complex, but I'm going to make it as simple as possible just so that it's a very, very basic thing to understand. Sodium and potassium cross paths. When they cross paths, they create an electrical charge. It's called a gradient. This gradient is what allows the carbohydrate to leave really fast, as well as water. So it allows everything to evacuate, but it also creates energy, because the sodium and the potassium crossing like that, it creates some friction. It creates a gradient, and it literally creates electricity. It creates energy. So that's why sodium is also very important in order to activate this pathway, in order to truly absorb carbohydrates as fast as you possibly can. Okay. Again, fructose does not require this process. It's very straightforward. So just to recap, I'm giving you a very basic example here. You consume a piece of bread, and you also consume an orange. Okay. When you consume those together, the bread is metabolized a different way, and follows the glucose transporter that requires sodium, the orange that you consumed does not require sodium. Okay, so two different pathways. So this is where things get really cool when it comes down to a performance side of things. So this study was published in the British Journal of Nutrition. Okay, and it took a look at eight cyclists, and it had these cyclists perform at 50% of their max power for 150 minutes. And what they wanted to measure was if carbohydrates would absorb faster if they were combined, or if they were standalone. So half of the cyclists, they had consumed water with a little bit of regular glucose in it, okay? About 1.2 grams per minute's worth. So water with regular sugar, or water with glucose. The other group, they had consumed water with glucose and fructose, okay? Well, guess what? What they found at the end of the study was that the group that combined glucose and fructose, two different carb sources, ended up having almost twice the rate of absorption as the other group. 1.75 grams per minute carbohydrates were absorbed versus about one gram per minute. Boom, all the science debunked for the last number of decades. You can indeed absorb carbs faster if you combine glucose and fructose. Why is this? Because instead of waiting for the bus for one transport chain, you're able to utilize both buses and get those carbs in there faster. But the caveat being, you have to have sodium in the mix. So what do you do, and why does this make sense for you? Well, let's say you're following a low-carb diet. Let's say that you are following strictly a keto diet because you love the cognitive benefits, but you're starting to find that your performance is waning. Well, this is the solution. It's called a targeted ketogenic approach, and there's a lot of science to back it up if you do it right. A lot of the hardcore keto people will say that you should never do this, but if you're someone that's performing top-notch in a lot of different levels, you need to be paying attention. 
okay? So if you were to combine just a small amount of carbohydrates from a regular glucose source or a regular carb source, along with a small amount of fructose from like a fruit source, along with a small amount of sodium, you're gonna activate a very unique pathway that's gonna allow you to absorb these carbs really fast and have them shuttle into your glycogen stores. Okay, you're absorbing them so fast that the blip on the radar is so small that you don't really kick yourself out of keto for long. You're allowing yourself to bounce out of keto for just a minute, just enough to load your glycogen stores up even more and give yourself a little bit of power for your workout, but you're not having this long lasting carbohydrate effect that's gonna keep you out of keto for an extended period of time. It's gonna bounce you out and bring you right back in while giving you all the positive advantageous effects of carbohydrates without the crazy blood sugar rises and falls. This is something that could be really, really powerful for you if you're trying to maximize your results in the gym and with your performance, but also trying to maintain true to your ketogenic lifestyle so you can reap the cognitive benefits as well. So all you have to do is consume maybe 10 or 15 grams of carbohydrates from each source, along with maybe a quarter teaspoon of like some real good quality salt, and you're in a great situation to absorb those carbs really quick, get your workout in, and be able to be back in keto just in time for lunch. Hey, as always, if you have ideas for future videos or you want more of this biohacking stuff, just let me know down in the comment sections below. This is all about being able to teach you the ways that you can truly get the most out of your body by not just relying on research, but relying on real life too. I'll see you in the next video.